So Disney is just getting flop after flop after flop, and it's hard to keep up with the amount of fail that Disney has been experiencing. While it is a glorious thing, and I have a lot of fun reporting on it, obviously, you guys know that, I still am having a tough time keeping up with everything that's going on. So Disney has been firing a ton of people. That's number one. Disney's TV shows and movies have been failing tremendously. That's number two. And now you also have The Mandalorian, their crutch for Star Wars, the show that they were hoping was going to bring them back into the spotlight. Apparently, the Nielsen ratings have finally come out from The Mandalorian, and the premiere viewership has completely cratered. Yes, it has completely cratered in comparison to Season 2's viewership, and that goes to show how people are checking out of Star Wars as much as they have been. It says Nielsen released their weekly viewership numbers and the show The Mandalorian Season 3 premiere viewership numbers significantly declined from the Season 2 premiere. This is something I have a great time reporting on because I've made it very clear. Disney Star Wars can go F itself. Honestly, like I don't, I have zero interest in doing anything Star Wars related. As you guys are aware, I haven't even reviewed this show. I was thinking about it. I really was thinking about it because I know that a lot of you guys wanted me to touch Star Wars. But again, I just can't bring myself to do it. I fucking hate everything that they have done with Star Wars as Disney. Like Disney has ruined Star Wars completely. And The Mandalorian Season 3 is no different. A lot of the people that are in my uh, Saturday Night Hypnosis live stream every Saturday, they um they are telling me what's happening in The Mandalorian, and they are essentially telling me that it is terrible. The latest few episodes that have come out have been really, really bad. The first episode wasn't that bad, but then everything after that has been pretty terrible, and it's only going to get worse from there, I can almost guarantee you. And I look at Bounding Into Comics and their reviews, and it's pretty much the same story. So let's see what this article has to say. So it says, Nielsen revealed during the week of The Mandalorian Season Season 3 premiere, February 27th through March 5th, the show only was viewed 823 million minutes. Now, let, let's sit back and think of this number for a second. 823 million minutes is not exactly a bad number. I'm just being honest with you. 823 million is not terrible. It's about average or maybe slightly above average. Just being real. But the question is not whether it's a good uh, number for the show. The question is, is it continuously experiencing a decline because people are checking out of Star Wars? And I would answer yes. And this and this article is going to go into that. It says, so that was only good for a fifth on the weekly charts behind Outer Banks, Murdoch Murders, A Southern Scandal, The Last of Us, and NCIS. This is the chart right here, and as you can see, Mandalorian is number five on the overall chart, so it's literally right in the middle. It is average at best, only beating out We Have a Ghost, Coco Melon, Perfect Match, Bluey, and South Park on HBO Max. Now, if you look at some of the other numbers, I mean, to get beat out by NCIS, it is what it is. I mean, it has a ton of episodes. You got binge-watching, re-watching, and stuff to consider, and there's also a little bit of that in The Mandalorian happening as well. But again, this goes to show just how bad Disney Star Wars is doing because this is their big hit the mandalorian is supposed to be their big hit their big tv show that they rely on it says the show did place third on nielsen's overall original streaming chart behind outer banks which drew in over 2.21 billion minutes and murdoch murders a southern scandal which garnered over 1.08 billion minutes the last of us is classified as an acquired property by nielsen given its airs on hbo and is then streamed on hbo max NCIS is also an acquired property, given the show originally airs on CBS and has since been licensed to Netflix and Paramount+. Plus. The total minutes viewed for The Mandalorian Season 3 declined by 207 million minutes. That is a lot, guys. 207 million minutes lost compared to the premiere of Season 2. That is absolutely freaking insane, man. That is a crazy number loss. And even though, again, like I said, 800 some odd million minutes viewed is not terrible for a TV show that has a total of about 17 episodes, not bad. However, you got to factor in that Mandalorian was binge watched guaranteed by a ton of people before the season three came out because it's been a while between season two and season three. So people looking to catch up and understand the story were probably binge watching season one and two before season three released. So that counted a little bit for their premiered numbers. So again, some of that 800 some odd million minutes viewed number is actually binge watching from people who are trying to catch up on season one and season two. That's how the Nielsen numbers work. It takes into the entire show's account, not just what happened from season three. When season two premiered and released on Disney Plus, the show drew in 1.030 billion minutes viewed. That is a big, big 
difference. So it says, while doing a straight comparison between the runtime, it actually looks like The Mandalorian might have increased its number of viewers by over 3 million people. The season 2 premiere of The Mandalorian Chapter 9, The Marshal, had a runtime of 56 minutes. Thus, if you divide 1.030 billion minutes by 56, you get around 18.4 million viewers. The Mandalorian Chapter 17, The Apostate, the season 3 premiere, only has a runtime of 38 minutes. Dividing 823 by 38, you get 21.65 million viewers. However, this is a big point right here, so watch this. However, as YouTuber Valiant Renegade points out, Nielsen's Minutes Watch reporting does not just look at single episodes, but looks at the show in its entirety. That's the big kicker right there. You guys got to remember that when you're looking at Nielsen ratings, it takes in the account of the entire TV show. So again, when season three came out, there was enough time that when it started recording the numbers, you have to take into account that people were binge watching to catch up to season three. That's a guarantee. Like people were actually watching season one and two to catch up to three. He explains, there is a tremendous amount of binge watching that comes into play leading into the premiere. That means a rather significant amount of those 823 million watch minutes accumulated by Nielsen during that week for the Disney Plus show were probably made re-watching seasons one and largely season two to refresh after a two-year and four-month hiatus from the previous season's premiere in October of 2020. On top of noting that binge-watching factors into Nielsen numbers, he also notes that Season 2 of The Mandalorian premiered on a Friday rather than the current season debuting on a Wednesday. Valiant Renegade explains, if The Mandalorian Season 2 premiered on a Friday, that means it had a full 48 hours less than the Season 3 premiere of The Mandalorian just a few weeks ago. Well, that would make the Nielsen numbers even worse. And that's straightforward, guys. That I don't know how much more simple to put it other than that. They are bolstering their numbers with season one and two binge watching because they know that people were going to binge watch to catch up because it's been almost three years between what happened in season two and what's happening now in season three. Later in the video, he also points out, and the worst part of all, when The Mandalorian season two debuted in October of 2020, there were over 10 million fewer subscribers to Disney Plus in North America. The Walt Disney Company ended its fourth quarter of fiscal year 2020 on October 3rd, 2020 in their earnings report for the quarter, they reported they had a total of 73 million subscribers to Disney+. Plus. In their most recent quarterly report for the first quarter of fiscal year 2023, the Walt Disney Company reported they had a total of 161 million Disney Plus subscribers. However, in this new report, they indicated that they only have 46 million subscribers in the United States and Canada and another 57 million internationally for a total of 104 million. On top of these core subscribers, they have another 57 million hot star subscribers. Interestingly, that report indicated that the domestic subscribers declined by 200,000 subscribers compared to the previous quarter. So he ended up saying, no matter how you want to slice this, this is terrible for Walt Disney, this is terrible for Lucasfilm, and it is terrible for Star Wars and The Mandalorian. This is an audience that has shrunk tremendously since its second season, he added. So listen, guys, ultimately, Disney Star Wars is struggling. We know it's struggling. They couldn't even get Reva's lightsaber funded, all right? Like, we're never going to let that live down because it was such a fail on their part. And even though, like I said, 800-some-odd million minutes viewed, not bad, not bad at all. But I want to see the consistent viewership throughout the season. That's how I judge a TV show. I never judge a TV show by its premiere. So even though we're making fun of Star Wars right now, we need to see what the viewership numbers are going into it after the premiere. If it has completely bolstered down, fallen down to the point where it's like 700 million minutes, 600 million minutes, and you can pretty much guarantee the Disney Star Wars is dead. Because if your big hitter, Mandalorian, is not doing the numbers that you expect it to do... What are, what are your other shows going to do? It's not going to do anywhere close. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.